Six or seven months ago, there was an ongoing discussion about input gain and amp sims. The discussion was severely flawed. I assumed it would die out and correct itself, but it hasn't. I am here today to tell you that Neural DSP, Rabia, that you don't need to turn up your DI signal. You should never have done that. John Cordy. Now people are saying, yeah, of course you set your audio interface to minimum. If you have been doing that, great. You're not going to get a noisier signal because actually the noise floor of your pickups is the, the thing, your, the self noise of your audio interface is not a factor in this at all. These people on Reddit. Oh. Are wrong. They're all wrong. You are all wrong. And I'm going to prove it in excruciating detail with science and math, everyone's favorite topics. First, let's recap the problem. The issue has to do with the relationship between physical signal levels, measured in volts, and digital signal level, an arbitrary number generally in the range between positive one and negative one. The accepted wisdom was, and still should be, to set the input gain on your audio interface as high as possible without clipping the signal. We'll get to why later in the video. There is no accepted convention for what is considered peak level for an instrument input. Some interfaces offer a plus 12 dBU input level, like the Focusrite Scarlett. My Behringer UMC1820 has a plus 18 dBU maximum instrument level. But if I decide to add a clean buffer with unity gain between my guitar and the interface and switch to a line level input, suddenly the maximum level is plus 11 dBU. Some consumer sound cards can only handle a maximum input level of negative 10 dBU. Other specialized converters can handle much higher levels, but they all end up converting that signal to a value in the range between negative one and positive one. So we can't assume any kind of fixed relationship between signal voltage and the digital unitless signal. What do I mean by unitless signal? Well, there's another example we can relate to and that's digital images. Here, I've opened the picture in Photoshop that's 100 pixels by 100 pixels in size. If you asked me, how big is this picture in inches? It isn't. What do you mean? I mean, it doesn't have a physical unit. It's just 100 arbitrary blocks of color on each side. Yeah, but I can measure it like this. But what if I buy a bigger monitor or change my resolution? But I need to print this picture. How big will it be? Well, how big do you want it to be? I don't know, like one inch by one inch would be good. Well, in that case, you can set your DPI dots per inch to 100 and print the picture. Cool, thanks. So, in order to print the picture on a piece of paper, we needed to give it a physical unit. For digital images, that unit is measured in DPI dots per inch. Because amp sims are emulating the real world, they too need a physical unit to work from. The problem is that there is no accepted convention or standard for what signal strength an amp simulator should be expecting. Very few, if any of them, actually specify the relationship between voltage and the digital signal that we're working with. If our digital signal is two imaginary units from peak to peak, from positive one to negative one, what does that correspond to in volts? The digital signal is unitless, it's arbitrary, it's an imaginary made up thing, just like the pixels in a digital image. Effectively, we need something akin to DPI, but for digital audio. Up until this point, people had just been setting the digital input level on the plugin by ear and just dial in something that sounds good enough. Not the most rigorous solution, but it mostly works. About six months ago, a discussion started brewing about this online. People were trying to solve this problem of how to relate physical analog signals to imaginary digital ones. And through a series of very unfortunate misunderstandings and misrepresentations of the problem, the proposed solution became always set your input gain at zero. Now, as an electrical engineer who's specialized in digital signal processing for the last 15 years, this raised an eyebrow because that's just not how you get the best performance out of an analog to digital converter. Now, I ignored this whole discussion because it was so obviously blatantly wrong and I just assumed it would go away and correct itself in due course. Color me surprised when I'm still met with this advice over six months later. It seems like misinformation really likes to stick around. So to understand the problem better, let's do an experiment. 
I plug in my humbucker guitar and I set the gain on my interface to zero, according to this supposed best practice. I load up my favorite Neural DSP plugin, and then I'm going to adjust my input gain according to this spreadsheet. This list has been created to translate the analog input level into a digital signal level that's correct for each plugin. Now, this sheet is actually a very good resource, and many thanks to the person who made it, because we are going to use this as the basis for our adjustments. But in order to use it effectively, you're missing one very crucial element. We'll get to that in a little bit. So it sounds pretty good. It's a little noisy though, since we've disabled the noise gate, but maybe this advice works well then? Mm, not so fast. Let's look at the signal to noise ratio. We have roughly 90 decibels of range, which is relatively good, but I wonder if we could do better. After all, we've spent a lot of money on this fancy audio interface with these expensive converter chips. We should probably make sure we're getting the best performance out of it, right? But where does the noise floor come from? Well, it's inherent in your audio interface, and it occurs as a result of current flowing through the circuit components in your preamp. It also depends on the conversion bit depth. For every added bit, we can achieve a reduction of roughly 6 dB in our noise floor. If our signal strength is very low, we never activate the most significant bits in our converter. We're not effectively using the full bit depth to digitize the signal. A signal that's peaking at one quarter of the clipping threshold is not using the two most significant bits in the converter. Increasing the gain also improves the strength of our signal relative to that of the fixed noise that's inherent in our interface. So this is why we turn up the gain on the interface, to maximize the signal to noise ratio. So let's do just that. Let's turn it up until we are just below clipping. We've managed to turn up the signal by almost 24 decibel. As a result, our new signal to noise ratio is much better. It now sits at around 109 decibel, an improvement of almost 19 decibels. Let's listen to the amp sim. Oops, that doesn't sound right. It's very flabby and overly gainy. Well, of course it is, because we've just jacked up the gain by 24 decibels. That would be equivalent to putting a 24 decibel clean boost in front of a real amplifier. What did you expect? Now, an important part. We have to reduce the digital gain after the conversion has occurred to compensate for the gain we added before the conversion. So we subtract 24 decibels from our current 4.8 decibels and get a new value of minus 19.2 dB. With this value in place, the signal strength hitting the plugin is identical to what it was before. So now it sounds right again. And this is the critical part, the part that everyone missed. Our signal to noise ratio is still significantly improved. We have not introduced any added distortion to the signal. Our DI is still completely clean. We've just adjusted the input gain to ensure that the analog to digital conversion takes place at its optimum level. This is the right way to gain states for a digital workflow. On Reddit, everyone kept harping on about gain staging. Gain staging, gain staging. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Yes, it does in fact all come down to gain staging. But apparently no one knows what that actually means. Gain staging means ensuring the connected device is receiving the correct signal strength so that it can perform at its optimum level. For an audio interface's analog to digital converter, that means feeding it the strongest possible voltage signal without clipping. For a digital plugin, it means feeding the correct digital signal to match the signal level that the plugin was modeled for. 
These are two independent adjustments, not one, and people have conflated them. And this is why I say that the just set it to 0 dB approach is wrong. Of course, if you adjust one, you will need to adjust the other to compensate for the added or removed gain, to ensure unity gain throughout the entire signal chain. What people are missing is the fact that they have not one, but two targets to optimize. First, we need to optimize the input signal into the analog to digital converter in our audio interface. And second, we need to optimize the input signal into the digital plugin. Don't conflate the two. We have independent control over both of these targets and we should use them correctly to ensure optimum performance of both our audio interface and our plugin. So finally, here is my modified best approach. Step one, set your audio interfaces gain to zero. Wait, I'm not done. Step two, set the input gain in your plugin according to the spreadsheet. Step three, increase the gain on your audio interface until you're just below the clipping threshold when you're playing as loud as possible. Step four, reduce the digital input gain in the plugin to compensate. And that is how you correctly gain states on AmpSim. I hope this was helpful. I know it's a lot of information to take in, but that's necessary to thoroughly explain why this is the correct approach, because people are really reluctant to receive good advice. But in the end, the process of adjusting the gain isn't too difficult as long as we include all four of the necessary steps. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. If you still disagree with me, leave your comments down below. They help boost my ratings in the YouTube algorithm, so I love angry comments. That's it for now, and as always, have a great day and keep making music. Thank you so much for watching.